There we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our weekly leadership cocktail call. This is the place to hear success stories from people uh, that has been with us, with Opulence Global, for a while now. And it's a great opportunity to hear not only the basic business stuff, but to hear a life story, to hear the challenges, to hear what is those things that are really moving the people uh, that we see every day. And if you are a guest here, you probably not yet know what Opulence Global is and what do we really do. Uh, but today you might get uh, an interesting perspective uh, on what do we do with Opulence Global. But the most important part of today is I will have the pleasure to, to be interviewing Ronan Trifon. Ronan Trifon is a lifestyle director free in the company. Uh, he's been seven years with Opulent Global. He has more than 7,000 partners all over the world who is supporting no matter what time is it and on where on the globe he is. Ronan Trifon is the father of two amazing, beautiful children. They are based in Australia. Ronan is Australian born and he was growing up in Israel until around the age of 20 something and then he left to Australia. And for the last few years, he has been actually traveling the world from country to country. Most of the times, not even staying at one country more than six months until the last uh, crazy pandemic that we are all still experiencing today. And even on those uh, challenging times, Ronan, I know you had uh, an amazing experience. Uh, because of your life choices and because of your involvement with Opulence Global. So I'm very excited to have you on. Welcome to the call, Ronan, and welcome all our partners and all our guests. Thank you very much, Julia. I hope that you can hear me well. Yes. yes. Perfect. I see that people are still streaming into the room. I've just... Uh, Welcome the RLD4 Rene Liao on the call. But I say, let's go. <laughs> you said you had a few questions for me. I have many questions and I hope I will have enough time to ask all of them. <laughs> so are you ready to answer my questions? Because you only know about part of them. You're not, uh... <laughs> you do not know all my questions. So you cannot be ready for all of them. <laughs> well, I am ready for all questions purely because 10 years ago I've decided that my existence should no longer be about showing the world how great I am, but quite the opposite, being a totally open book regarding all my weaknesses, regarding all the failures, regarding all the places that, in my opinion, literally brought me to where I am today. And it's usually not my successes, it's usually all the attempts and the failed attempts of everything I've ever done. So I'm on open book, ask and we shall share. Amazing. So we're going to read a book today. Question number one, <laughs> Ron and Trifon. Did you have any other profession before network marketing in your life? Yes, I did. And I apologize for anyone that's watching this video live. There is renovation next door, so I'm hearing hammers and stuff. So if you're hearing too much side noise, I apologize. I will try and speak louder. You guide me regarding volumes, Julia. Yeah, I had many professions before I have met the industry of uh, uh, network marketing or even our remarkable industry today, that is truly e-commerce. Uh, which is where we are today. But yeah, I think my first job really was like most of us to drive my parents crazy. And I've done a very, very good job at that. I remember my father used to come home most of the time. There was a line of guests of neighbors that are wanting to complain. Uh, my real first job, I think, was uh, delivering, working in a video shop. Video, if anybody still remember videos. Uh, and I uh, also delivered videos to homes, and then I've worked in a pancake shop. Uh, and I remember I've even started my first job in the bar when I was 15 in a very, very funny bar in Israel. In those days, there were no age drinking. 
one moment, Ronan, I'm sorry. I wanted to mute everyone because I was hearing noises, but now you need to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Host would like to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. So from the, from the world of my first jobs, moving into uh, the three years in the army, when I left the army, I actually went and uh, somehow got into hospitality. I went and worked for two, almost two years in uh, Club Med. And Club Med, who doesn't know, is actually 119 clubs around the world that we, the GO, the entertainment crew, we used to uh, teach sport during the day and then we used to do shows at night. So uh, I have joined my mother and my sister who has always been on stages performing. I have joined in those days. And I remember that then I have decided to go back to the country I was born in, which was Australia, because since the age of two, my parents returned to Israel and I've never really seen Australia. So I went back to Australia and then as, as usual, I went into what I did best, which was hospitality. And I was managing the level one tapas bar in uh, the Hyatt in Collins and uh, eventually managed a Chinese restaurant and then a tapas bar called Cafe Baluga. And I remember I was really getting tired of this lifestyle. It's very, very crazy. It's night work. It's mad. And I decided, do I go back to Israel? Do I start studying? What do I do? And I remember I was looking in the newspaper and I saw an ad, only monkeys work for peanuts. So I opened that ad. I said, who's going to put an ad, only monkeys work for peanuts? Anyway, it was an ad for Encyclopedia Britannica. And uh, I've started a five-year career uh, selling encyclopedias, door-to-door, -door, shopping centers, never understood anything about sales. I think that when I was 16, somebody approached me with a job to sell security doors. And I remember that I knocked on the first door. And by the time they answered, I was already gone. I was not there. So I always thought I cannot sell. Uh, it's funny how at the age of 21, 22, I found myself in Encyclopedia Britannica with a massive, massive success. But one of the families that I went to sell Encyclopedia Britannica to, they said to me, listen, you have really good presentational skills. Have you ever heard of network marketing? And I said, no, nope, got no idea what it is. And they came and they started drawing those circles on a piece of paper and told me you have to find people here and people there and you need to do all this stuff all i remember is i understood absolutely nothing it sounded very good i was very young and i figured out why not now it's very important for everybody to remember a lot of people that come into our industry they usually come because they want to make income i was making a lot of income in encyclopedia britannica i mean we were making 700 dollars a set and i was making a lot of money for a 22 year old so I never really started with this company called Mway, the American way, because I wanted money. I started because I was in a country that was brand new. I didn't really know too many people. And I figured out that's a great way to increase my networking capabilities, to increase, to meet people. And that's exactly what has happened the first two years. I don't really think that I've done much beyond going to events and meeting people. And uh, so for me, networking started from a very social point of view and not from a financial point of view. But that was my world before I was getting into networking. In reality, my first five years in Mway were really to teach me how the world is in Australia compared to other places. It allowed me to start going to events. It allowed me to start dressing up in a different way, more professional. It taught me very, very good behavioral and psychological methodologies. Uh, I've never seen money, okay, in those years. And then the internet came and Encyclopedia Britannica has been destroyed. And I thought, well, if you can beat them, join them. And that's where, at the same time, I went and studied IT technical user support and went to the world of IT. And from there, the world of network marketing and my professional world of corporate always went parallel. 
And I have discovered that the skills that I have adopted from the network marketing industry for, that has brought me very deep into self-awareness and self-development, because now I'm reading, uh, you know, amazing, amazing content such as, oh, and then I see the queen, my mother. Hello, my mother, Linda Trifon. Hey, darling. Always, always a pleasure yeah. to have you. Um, so now I'm starting to read things like Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I'm doing projects and uh, uh, training seminars with uh, Anthony Robbins, Unleashed the Giant Within, and started to work with Robert Kiyosaki, became a cash flow instructor. So I went into this massive world of self-development and self-awareness that has elevated me in the world of IT like a rocket. I have basically always had jobs that are way too high, higher than me. And remember, I have never really been certified in anything. So everything that I've gained, knowledge, inspiration, self-awareness, self-development came from that world of network marketing, which was for me companies such as uh, Mway and then uh, Puretech and then uh, Agile and then Monavi. Uh, and of course, that was one world. And today in the call, I hope that we will have time to cover the difference of what happened after 25 years in network marketing to coming here to Opulence Global seven years ago, thinking it is network marketing and discovering a brand new world that is called e-commerce, which operates on very different rules than the conventional network marketing, which can be very limiting and sometimes very frustrating. So that's what I did before MLM. Back to you, Julia. So what did we have there? We have the army, the entertainment world, then the encyclopedias because of the peanut article. <laughs> and since then, you basically, as you said, you were doing your IT world with your network marketing world. But network marketing at that stage was not the main thing of your life. It was like a side thing, something that you took serious or not serious at that time. Well, the first company, as I said, was really to establish my learning of self-development and self-awareness and to really start learning, I think, what not to do. And remember, it took me five years learning what not to do. So when I got to my second company, uh, I was already starting to earn income. Uh, and my third company was already bringing uh, at least a quarter of what I was bringing in IT, right? And uh, the company after that was Monavi which was supposed to be the top because I had a massive organization, 150,000 people. Uh, but even then, because of the compensation plans of the industry, uh, you can have 150,000 people and still make one month a few hundred dollars and another month $3,000 and another month $200. It's never stable. It all goes like that because we, anyone that's done network marketing knows that the compensation plans are very limited on ranks and qualifications. So even if you've sold a million dollar of product, but if you don't have three or four people that you brought and they're at a certain uh, rank at a cert the same time, then you literally can lose almost 80% of the money of the product sold in your organization. So uh, truly real income, what I call real income, above $10,000 a month and above, Every month, every month, every month, or even $5,000, right? A month and above every month. Uh, we don't consider that professional full-time income. We consider it hobby side-time income generator, okay? And I think only opulence have allowed me to truly uh, build a business that is stable, growing, and in, in majority based on the true sales that are done through the organization and not limited by different things like ranks, qualifications, authorships, and, and many, many other things. Does that make sense, Julia? Yes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay, so I have two questions combined. Uh, <clears throat> when did your journey with Opulence Global started and how Opulence Global made your life better? I started with Opulence Global in 14th of March, 2014. So that's, I'm doing my eighth year now. And how opulence changed my life, it is the first 
e-commerce platform that I was operating. It's the first platform that literally allowed me to not require a job anymore, to not require another income stream. Because of the uniqueness of opulence, it is the only platform I know that literally allows you to operate in every country in the world simultaneously. Most companies I've been before, I was usually, they usually had five, 10 products, and they usually wanted me to build in the region or country that I was in. And it was very limiting, okay? Um, Opulence have allowed me global expansion. They've already taken care of all the delivery channels with like 17 different delivery companies. Uh, and today they gave me the ability to be able to have a shopping center, which means today when I put effort online anywhere in the world, and my customers come from 137 countries, so anywhere in the world, when I bring a customer into my shopping center, all I do is need to bring them in and connect them to one great product. After that, they are in my shopping center all their life because we have six industries and we have over 1,400 products that every two, three months are being renewed and new lines are coming out and winter lines and autumn lines and summer lines. And this is only in fashion. So when you think about bags, shoes, female shoes, male shoes, you're talking about timepieces, you're talking about any form of jewelry, you're talking just in this world, a customer of mine is for life. Every Valentine, every Christmas, everything they do, they if they have points, if they have money in the shop, and we always spoil our customers and give them some opulence points and some things to get as presents, they will always buy in my shopping center and their health, they will buy in my shopping center because we are the top in the world in gum and tooth protection. We are the top in the world in hair and scalp protection. We are the top in the world and the only one that has the most important two raw materials on the planet, medical grade micro silver and Norwegian spruce extract. What we do in the world of health and what I call uh, illness protection no one out there can do. So not only I am the top fashion house in the world, I am also the highest authority body with technologies that nobody else has. And all of this is in my shopping center. So every customer that comes in, the real work that I do today is just to bring a customer into my shopping center. Compare that to the first 25 years of network marketing, it was not about bringing a customer because take my last company, one product, a bottle of juice was about $160 a month. Just that, just antioxidants. And then we had something else, uh, glucosamine, right? To, to ease pain, reduce inflammation. That's another $160 a month. That's $320 a month on two products. How many true customers do you think can afford or will stay doing that? No, it was my friends, my family wanted to support me. They tried, some of the stuff is good, but it was always fairly expensive. And that's why it was an ending, never ending story. It's like I bring a customer, but the two months, three months after they're no longer using. So I need to fill the bucket with more customers and more customers and more customers. And basically, if you let go of that action, your income will immediately drop. Unlike in opulence in the last seven years, if you look at my customer list and you'll see that they are consuming for years upon years and always consuming more and more and more products because we have newer evolutions. We are evolving as a company. So my customers are here for life and they are now producing together with my partners uh, an income that allows me to do what most of us consider impossible. As you said, I've not been for the last five years, except Thailand through the pandemic, 16 months. I haven't been anywhere for more than three months. You said six months. Three months was the max that I stayed in a country. And, uh, you know, I do not know many things on this planet that can allow you financially to do that. That doesn't mean that all of you would like my lifestyle because a lot of us have families, we have kids, we have our lives. But... I'm talking about having the freedom. Opulence has given me the true freedom of choice to do what I want to do with my life, where most people cannot afford to have that choice. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so it made your life a lot better uh, by your answer. Uh, you mentioned a few things. You mentioned the opportunity to have an e-commerce platform. You mentioned the freedom that you have, uh, the easiest way of you ever having customers uh, that are returning customers which you could never achieve in your previous experiences, right? Okay, next question. It's a personal question, not a business question. Uh, what is your biggest passion in life? Wow. Um, <clears throat> beside my new partner in life, uh, I have many. I love scuba diving. I love snow skiing. I love skydiving very, very much. Uh, horse riding. My one of my biggest passions here, actually, in uh, in the desert in Egypt. I love camels. I actually wanted to go and take a photo with a sign that says opulence and put it on the camel and ask Ramin Masgalo, our owner, to see if he were willing to open a new car club called the Camel Club, and then I'll be able to enjoy my camel. Um, Truly, I love, I, I think my biggest love from more than anything else are human beings. I love humanity. I love how I feel when I am surrounded with great people. Uh, I love to, uh, to really see people around me through conversations. You can see the penny drops and you can see that they make choices for themselves and evolve. Um, I love life. Truly am I, I live off life daily. That's my biggest passion. Amazing. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to see you for a while now, how you connect with people, uh, people you even only know for one second. Uh, so I know it's true. People are your passion. Okay. In your opinion, how is Opulence Global different than other MLM companies? Uh, you touched a few points on that before, but what would be the main thing? Okay, so yeah, we did touch about the difference between e-commerce and network marketing, and they look similar, but e-commerce literally, as we said, allows me global expansion. It allows me more than just to specialize in five particular products. But the other massive advantages are really the way we are being compensated, how we're getting paid for the action that we put in. And in most companies, as I said, the sales of the organization are tied together with ranks and qualification. And in opulence, rank and qualifications are designed to motivate and inspire you, but they are not designed to stop you from the income of the product sold in your organization. And that's keeping it really simple because unless you've understood compensation plans of other companies and like me, work with it for over 17 years, it is better to keep it really simple as to what are the biggest differences. So that will be one of the core differences. Another core difference is that the industry for many years had a system that's called an auto ship. It means that the customer or the uh, partner has to buy a product and get it delivered to their home on a month by month basis. Now, I've seen through many, many years in many companies, people, because of that, get stuck with product at home. And they don't even use it. They have more than they need to use it. So then it sort of accumulates in the, in the garage. And uh, people really never enjoyed that. And I think that Opulence and Ramin's Complan is so smart that they say, think about the way we work. We don't go and look for partners. We don't go and look for people to sell something. We actually want everyone in the world to be a customer here with Opulence. And the second you're a customer, so if I come now uh, to uh, Maria and I say, hey, Maria, is it okay with you that I'll expose you to the best toothpaste in the world? And Maria says, yeah, sure, why not? And I send her a five-minute video and I show her how to download the app on the phone. And then I say, sign up as a customer for free order yourself a toothpaste, right? So now she tries the toothpaste and then she's going to fall in love with that toothpaste because there are no such thing on the planet, right? And after that, because I had given a good recommendation, 
Now, Maria, trust my recommendation. When I offer Fountain of Life or Sterling or anything else, she will try it. And she's going to get the same results as all of us because we're dealing with the best products in the world. So there are results. That's where I can come to Maria and say, listen, you're already buying Fountain of Life and, and toothpaste. That's already $150 every month. That means in a year, you're going to spend about $1,800, right? If you like those products, first of all, why don't you as a customer purchase them for cheaper? Because if you can get a lifestyle advisor, you will immediately get a minus 30% on the products that you're using. And I can see you're so excited. You might choose to actually go and bring some customers to opulence yourself. Doing so, you will get 40% on every customer's purchase. And if you want to bring partners like I am now doing with you, you will get 7.5% on the partner activity. So basically, where most MLM companies work on very fast modes, they usually in three to five years, they already exited. They usually started, climbed, sold themselves to somebody else or no longer exist. We're here, we're a 16-year body. And if you truly start with customers, loyal customers to a product, it makes sense that that loyal customer will have the authentic energy to share it with everyone they know. By doing that, they can generate an income. They can save money on the product, right? And remember, we don't have auto ship. That means that if now Maria says, okay, I want to start as a lifestyle advisor, I will tell Maria, that's fantastic. What you're really doing is giving the company $1,800 Canadian, and the company is not taking it. They're actually putting that money in your own bank account inside opulence. So you didn't actually spend anything yet. This is money that you are going to buy stuff as a consumer because you already are a customer. Just you're going to get 30% less. And if you do that, if you tell opulence, I'm a loyal customer, I'm buying $1,800 ahead of time. There, I'm putting $1,800, putting in my saving account so I can buy from this money the company will then give you another $700 on top of that to spend. So now you've got $2,500 as a customer that was going to spend this money anyway. You're saving 30% every month on your product. And then instead of auto ship, instead of Maria having to purchase something and pay $30 shipping every month, instead of that, all she can do is every month put $150 from a credit card into a saving account and from the fourth month she's going to get 10 percent extra so now look what happened from a happy customer she jumped into a customer that is paying minus 40 percent because of smart buy after three months 150 dollars into my account i get an extra 10 percent on top of the lifestyle advisor so you're saving 40 percent on your product as a customer you're saving a lot of money, not needing to do shipping every month, like auto ship, right? You can only do your purchase that you need a big one every three months. You're saving a lot of money on shipping, 40% discount. It's an amazing concept for a customer, customer, someone that's using a product. And then when a customer that's using a product recommends something to someone else, it's very powerful. But if you have joined a business that you didn't try a product, that you're not in love with the product. The only reason you have is to make money. And then you go to people and trying to promote it, they will feel that you're not authentic. They will feel that you're trying to push something with your own agenda, right? But if you're a true customer, don't think just business. First, think me as a business owner in opulence, first and most important, I am the most important customer I have. If I cannot have myself as a customer, why would I expect other people to be my customers? Think of that. If I am not a true customer of my own thing, why would I expect people to be my customers? Okay, so network marketing does not advocate that enough. Do not teach that enough. They're all about bring millions of people very quickly. Let's all make money. Now you've got yourself an army of people that have been there for a week. Nobody knows anything. Everybody has massive expectations that are completely unrealistic according to the work they're willing to put in. And in opulence, the biggest difference is we teach people a true business. 
a true business that you can then build, leave to your kids, sell, you can do whatever you want. But in my opinion, if you're like me and you've created hundreds of customers all over the world and 8,000 partners all over the world, I am never going to leave this place ever because it produces things that no other company in the network industry has ever allowed me to do. Back to you. Thank you very much, Ronan. <clears throat> Something popped into my mind. People that are not using the product and they want to recommend, it's like recommending someone a meal at a restaurant you never ate at. So it makes a lot of sense what you said. Now to my it's next true. question. Everyone loves success stories, but what I find really interesting are the hard moments and what kept you moving when those hard moments happen. Can you remember a time when you've been challenged or demotivated or you just wanted to just give up everything? I will say it the other way around. I cannot remember any time or any company I was with that I was not challenged and demotivated and frustrated and wanting to quit. And actually sometimes did quit. Um, yes, it happens a lot. I can give you many, many stories. I don't want to keep this too long, but I remember when I started uh, and really everybody told me, remember in my first company, you have to recruit, you have to recruit, talk to everybody you didn't want and that and that. I think I spoke to about, I don't know, in the beginning, almost a hundred plus people. And I could not get anywhere with them. And of course, today I know why. In the old days, I was very stubborn. I was the worst student you can have. I always wanted to lead and never wanted to follow. I was limited very strongly by my ego because my ego being a Gemini too, I've always created scenarios in my mind that are like uh, Steven Spielberg, you know, that they, I created movies. And then when reality did not allow me to get to those movies, I have done the worst thing anyone can do, and that is destroy myself. When you truly think about disappointments, when you think about being demotivated, it is only a, a point of view when you really think about it. You see, uh, and I had this conversation with my son uh, not a long time ago, about a month ago, and I told him, Shachaf, you know, in life, what I've discovered, if you are motivated by success, you're going to spend most of your life very unmotivated. Because you see, for every success, you need to go for at least five, 10 failures in order to achieve that success. Because success is truly us taking action, measuring it, seeing if we got where we wanted to. And if we did not, then we're going to take another action, measure it, and eventually we're going to get to success. You cannot get on a bicycle and understand balance without falling. That's impossible. So you must fall in order to measure, fall again, and eventually you learn how to ride this bike. In reality, if we are motivated by failures and not by successes, we will spend most of our life motivated. And the only way to do that is to truly understand that what we call failure doesn't really exist. There is only taking action and measuring and seeing where I am. If I did not arrive at where I want to be, right? Humans, we call it failure. And I don't know about all of you, but me, every time that I failed, every time I failed, it was like taking a knife and destroying myself. You're not good. You're stupid. You should not do that. You will never achieve that. And what you're doing is you're demotivated and destroying yourself every time that you fail. Now that's insanity because you cannot get to the top of the stairs unless you walk the stairs. And I promise you, every action you take, every action is energy. Every action you take is basically putting one step on the next, on the next step, right? One leg, feet on the next step. And then that moment that we feel like nothing is happening is only because we are lifting the second leg to the same level. And then we have again, push, and then bring up to the next level. Failure is only climbing up to the next step. Failure is climbing up to the next step. 
And without failure, without climbing the steps, you will never achieve what I call true success. There are fake successes. Fake successes is when we take some action and other people come and say, you're great, you're this, you're that. But if you have not achieved what your goal is, right, in your mind, you never really achieved success. I, I urge each and every one of you to change your mindset and understand that it is the successes you want to chase because six, uh, failures that you want to chase because failures means you're taking action. And most people, we stop ourselves from taking action because we don't want to fail. And that took me a long, long time. And if you know me long enough, you'd know that I was a very big expert at destroying myself because I always wanted to do things perfect. I was always an entertainer. I always wanted everybody to love me and to respect me and to tell me how good I am. And the most important person that should be loving me, respecting me, appreciating me was me. And I was not there. I was totally balancing my life according to the outside world instead of truly understanding what it is that I do to myself every day. And it's all a point of view. So the truth in reality is that I was motivated every time people told me no when I wanted something. I was, didn't, didn't, I remember that in my beginning, I used to uh, talk to people and it seems like they're going to become my customer or they're going to become my partner. And they were like, there. And then something happened and I told them, talked to them and they say, no, I'm not interested. Like what? Okay, you've just spent five days with this individual. They tell you it's all good, it's all good. And then suddenly, bang, right? These ones used to destroy me all the time. Today, no longer because I truly understand that I don't have control over other people. I have control over myself. And all I can do is keep on doing the simple action that I need to do and not measure my successes upon other people's reaction but truly measure my successes upon the daily activity that I choose to do. It's the only thing I have control over. So if I focus on my daily activity and not focus on, did I succeed? Did I not? Did people join me? Did they not? No, there is no possible for me not to reach where I want to go unless I stop myself by measuring the wrong type of successes and destroying myself. So, yes, I was very demotivated many, many times, even here in opulence. We are human beings. We have emotions. We create movies to ourselves. We make assumptions all the time. And sometimes things that are not even to do with us, we take it and put it upon ourselves. And I think that if I would share anything with people, it would be those moments. Because I know each and every one of us are going to go through them. But please remember, every no that anybody tells you is actually improving you. Because there's a reason there is a no, right? We must get no's. Statistically, it's not possible to get 20 yeses without 80 no's. But no, we only want the yeses. And that doesn't work that way. So, yes, I was very demotivated, very upset, very frustrated for many, many, many years. And let me tell you this, Yulia, it is the reason why I am where I am. Because if you're not frustrated and not demotivated, how do you ever learn to become better? How do you learn to overcome that to the point that the outside world can no longer uh, affect you and you will never again stop taking what you deserve from yourself? Because my lifestyle, I promise you, nothing special about me. We all deserve this freedom of choice. You might choose to live differently to me, but we all deserve the freedom of choice. And today I'm a walking poster to prove to the world that you can be uncertified. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to really, all you have to do is learn the simple steps, do them without stopping, and you will literally get control over your financial, physical health, mental health, financial health, and spiritual health. You will have control over it if you do not destroy yourself with your own assumptions, with your own uh, low self-belief, uh, with your own 
I cannot do it limiting belief style things. Back to you, Julia. Thank you very much. I think it was a strong point for many on this call. Okay, so let's go back a little bit in time uh, to 2020. So while most of the world has been basically going crazy uh, with the pandemic, you got stuck in the jungles of Thailand on a tropical island named Koh Phangan. How did it affect your business? The mathematical answer is very simple. Between the year 2019 to the year 2020, my business went 300% up. Understanding that uh, makes it very logical for all of us to know that we are no longer living in the world that we know. This world is, uh, nobody knows where it's going, but there is one thing we know for sure. We can be locked at home at any time anywhere on this planet. We have already seen freedoms being taken out of our hands, things that we would never believe 20 years ago are happening today. You might want to go and visit your kids, but you cannot. I have not seen my kids for almost two and a half years. I cannot go to Australia. I cannot take them out of Australia, right? Most of my friends that have had it very, very good in life, suddenly their businesses are bleeding cash, uh, they don't have workers, they do have workers, they are quarantined. I mean, the world is nuts. So that's obvious that the only safe form of income generation is online. What you can do with a smartphone and a laptop, right? Because this is the only true access to 8 billion people without limitations. Hey, look, I'm talking to all of you and I'm not wearing a mask. I guess Corona doesn't go through the internet. So, you know, uh, the, I guess I owe a lot of thank you to uh, a Persian visionary gentleman, the owner of our company. His name is Ramin Mazgalu. He had the ability and the wisdom 16 years ago to see what's coming. He had the ability to understand where nobody even knew Amazon or eBay. They were nothing almost. He saw the vision of connecting to all humans, doing electronic commerce, uh, moving any form of product you want. And he has allowed me at a very dangerous time because if I did not have opulence and I was in Thailand on a holiday on the way home and now I'm locked in a place for 16 months, what would I do? What, what would I eat from? Right? If I had a job, I would have lost it. If I had a business, probably I, I could not even leave Thailand. So it is the only thing that I had in my hand because of a vision of one individual 16 years ago that was perfectly designed and allocated for this pandemic. Not only that, we have massive solutions for this crazy times, you know, our unique masks and the fact that we allow people to wear masks without accumulating bacteria because they breathe through it and then have pneumonia and many other bacteria, we have one little spray, they go like this and they're okay for a week now. So we have solutions, not, not just that I can work online, but we have solutions that most human beings today literally need. And my job is very simple. Make sure that you invest five minutes in a human being without your agendas. Create a simple like and trust, find out who they are, a little bit about them. And then just ask a simple question. Is it okay with you if I'll expose you to the best toothpaste in the world today? Is it okay with you if I'll expose you to the number one antioxidant in the world today? Is it okay if I'll expose you to the best financial platform e-commerce base in the world? Right? It's a simple question. And if you do that 10, 20 times a day, you will be amazed at how most people will tell you, sure, why not? Share. And then share with a video, not by a very long lecture. Share with a video. If people want questions, they can always find you to ask more questions. Do not make my mistake of not knowing when to shut up. Okay? I've always, always oversell. Know how to keep it short. Know how to use a video 
and trust the people that if they want to know more, they know how to find you. And never, ever not do a follow-up. That's it. Just give the respect to the individual two days after. If they didn't come back to you, hey, I'm just following up with you. I'm not sure if you tried to order it. Can I help? Simple. Keep it simple and you will have a rising multinational business like you would not believe. I cannot believe my lifestyle. And I think even if you ask my mom, which is on the call, she will tell you most of my family, they always knew I was crazy, but they didn't know how it will perfectly fit on this industry. This industry for someone like me has saved my life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ronan. Okay, so I know you are working now on expanding into another country. What country is it? And can you describe your experience on the ground and what are your plans in this country? Yeah, well, I guess um, because with opulence, all options are open. Uh, I never really planned to come and open another country. As I said, I got stuck with the love of my life in Thailand for 16 months. And then eventually she returned back to her life in Israel. And we haven't seen each other for almost a month and a half, two months. And we had mutual friends that were getting married in the Sinai Desert in Egypt. And we figured out, well, what a perfect opportunity to meet. So I left uh, Thailand through Dubai. I see how Harad is coming in. I left to Dubai and then to Cairo. And then I came uh, here to the Sinai Desert. And when I discovered that in Israel, it was again, yes, quarantines, no quarantines, everything is going crazy. So I figured out I might as well take, uh, as you can see, take this place and get myself a little uh, Bedouin palace. Thank you, Ramin, and thank you, Opulence, for allowing me. Um, and I decided if I'm already here, why not open another very important region? Uh, the people that know me understand that my biggest challenge and joy is actually working with low economy countries, because I believe that our concept of what I call Robin Hood mentality, right, allows us to balance the financial differences that exist all over the world today. And I have been inspired by my teams and people that are not in my teams uh, in Kenya, in Nigeria. And I saw that a person that can earn $300 a month, can literally come here, have a business, sell a $1,000 shoe to someone in Canada, United States, and get 40%, bring $400 home from a sale of one shoe. That means that I have in my hands the ability of taking any person in the world, never mind what their financial abilities are, and literally allow them access to customers all over the world instead of what they used to do, and that's sell in their own country, right? Because if you are living in a low economy environment, most of your friends will be in your similar dollar paradigm, which means if I'm going to take expensive stuff and try and sell it into a low dollar paradigm, that is a challenge that network marketing has had for so many years. How many people do I know that went into, uh, spoke to me from India, and they said, I, I was brought into Mway or Herbalife, but they want me to sell here, right? This is, it, opulence is the exact opposite. We give people the ability with never mind what your environment is, you can go and basically promote products and have customers from anywhere in the world, from any economy base. So now we are literally doing Robin Hood. We are selling the highest level manufacturing products on the planet to all countries and the people can afford are actually buying and now by buying they are making the people that cannot afford to be able to afford so when i came here to egypt and i saw how low the general health of a human is and how big are the sacrifices because even if you work as a customer support operator i'm not sure you maybe you can check and see if my first egyptian partner is with us while i tell the story um but I went just to get a, a, a router for my internet. And I've gone into this shop and two people are work, working there, a support customer and this lady, and both of them look like they're in hell. And I asked them, what's wrong with you? And they said, oh, we have a headache, the air conditions here, da, da, da. Anyway, I gave them both 
uh, a little bit of uh, anti-headache relief. And the next day when I came in, they really, they helped, thanked me and da 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 da, da. And we started to talk. And uh, Mahmoud was telling me he was making 3,000 lira a month. That is like $250 a month, okay? And I started to think, imagine if I take someone like Mahmoud and they can't even afford, let's say, a lifestyle advice, but they are very family orientated in Egypt. That means the family support, they live together. It's a very, very family. Most low economy environments, you'll see are much stronger spiritually, right? They're closer, the families are stronger, they work together. So a, a family of 10 to 15 souls can easily, each one put 2,000 lira, they can get a lifestyle advisor shop and now start producing 500 to to $1,000 every week for the family. Very quickly, family members will be able to afford their own shops. And most important, most important, I've just been invited to Mahmoud Ali's uh, um, family uh, for dinner. It's the first Egyptian house I've ever been to for dinner. And amazing mother, he has a beautiful mother, but she was suffering, you know, hair loss and pain and things. And those are things that they will not go and take care of because the expenses of drugs and doctors cannot fit with their normal economy. So they will sacrifice and have pain until it goes away, hopefully or not. They just learn to live with pain. So something like opulence can allow someone like uh, uh, Mahmoud Helmi and his family, his mom, to be able to, first of all, not only increase their health, but also through the action of promoting internationally, give them the ability to have the money to be able to buy the health products we have for very cheap or for free. I don't know of any other platform that can do that. So for me, the ability of coming for a holiday to a country like Egypt, finding out the economy environment. And I'm telling you, if you were here, I did not shut up for two months. For two months, every person on the beach, every person I see, they, they hear about fountain of life and toothpaste, fountain of life and toothpaste, and I put it in their mouth and I let them put it in because it took almost two months for the words, for the people to start talking and the Bedouin to say, you don't know what it's done to my teeth and you don't know what it's done to this and my leg and my wife was going to go to the hospital and Ronan gave her this thing. And it, so then the words are going now, right? And through the people, I cannot be an Egyptian, but my partner is an Egyptian. So I can now be a servant leader, help my partner. And literally in two years, you might see a revolution here in Egypt. Look what happened in Israel. I've opened Israel in 2019. I brought Fountain of Life there. Today, Israel is eight months in a row number one in the world in consumers of products, right? So we know that we can literally change, we can literally change humanity. It takes time. I don't care how long it takes, but remember a butterfly effect operates on one person at a time, which means every one of the 81 people with us here is equally important in changing humanity's outlook and the balance financially between countries. Why should there be such a massive difference? Why should there be so many hundreds of millions of people that are fighting for food versus hundreds of millions, if not more, that are way overspent, right? You can enjoy life without having 16 Lamborghinis. So I don't think that I can change it politically. So I do believe that we can change it ourselves, the simple people, one person at a time. Zaya living in Thailand, knowing exactly sometimes how challenging it is, and he's coming from Burma. And I know that in Burma, things are tough, but if he can take one family in Burma and learn how to take 20 people and get one shop for 20, start bringing money from overseas, now he can literally in two years, three years, five years, totally change regions, hundreds if not thousands of peoples, outlook and aspect of
Back to you, Yulia. Amazing. <clears throat> okay, so you asked me to check if your first Egyptian uh, partner is here and is we have Mahmoud Helmi on the call with us. I'm not sure if he can speak, but Mahmoud, if you are here and you want to unmute yourself and maybe say hello to us. It's so, possible that he is at work at the moment. Yeah, I because know. Because Mahmoud is working all the time in WE, so I'm not sure if he'll be able to talk. If you can talk, raise your hand. If not, we'll go there. I can see him. If not, we'll go to the next question because I can see that his microphone is on. But Hello, maybe he's at work. Oh! Can you hear me? Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mahmoud, help me. How are you? I'm good. What about you? It's a pleasure to be with you. The, the honor is mine. Thank you for talking to us in the middle of your work. You're at work now, right? Yeah, I, I just finished my work right now. So maybe for everyone on the call with us, very quickly, you can share how is your life looking? How is it different from the minute you and I met and when I introduced opulence to you? Uh, did it allow you to start thinking larger about what your life can look like? Please share with us. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I have a, a big change since I met you the last time. Uh, I start to uh, thinking positively and uh, I have uh, now a new ideas about uh, uh, the way of thinking, the way of uh, uh, working. So as, uh, as you told us, uh, we met together as a, a chance. It was a chance to meet together uh, in the central where I was, uh, I seek from a headache and you give me a uh, this bill is a magic bill, <laughs> which make me uh, uh, in a good mood, uh, which I, I don't be in a good mood. So uh, it was a pleasure to meet you, and I hope uh, we can work together and, uh, and do a lot of work, achieve a lot of goals. Mahmoud, you, you represent a large... Uh a large group of uh, uh, people that would be in your economy level. Yeah. I remember one of the concerns you had is how can I find the money to be able to start a business like Opulence? Remember? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But there are many, many people on the world, in the planet, uh, that might find it the same as you, right? We have my friend Zaya from, as I said, is in Thailand at the moment, but many people do not see how it is possible and I think your example is very, very good. Uh, you really are started as a customer, right? And you have worked with me, even though you didn't have yet the income, you still studied, you still worked with me. And then slowly, slowly, we looked at different avenues, maybe uh, through work, maybe through a bank, maybe through something, but it did not, what I want people to understand, it did not stop you from taking action and learning for the last month and a half, and it did not stop you, right? You didn't say, I don't have the money now, so I'm only going to start learning when I have the money. No, you have studied, learned, you've already worked with FedEx, right? Bringing products in. So what would you suggest to anyone on the planet that is coming from a difficult financial country? What would you suggest to them if currently they cannot afford to start? Ah, uh, I, I'd like to say it doesn't matter uh, how much you have. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter uh, how, you, how you are now. It doesn't matter. Uh, just start. Just confidence. Just have this confidence in yourself. Uh, believe. Believe in yourself. Uh, find people like... Uh, like you, Gunen, like these people who, who, who can enlighten you and push you, uh, push you up so you can achieve all of your goals. So, so uh, I'll, I'll, allow me to share, Mahmoud. What we actually did before you had the money, we went and hit the road, right? We already managed to get you a lot of customers, both for Fountain of Life and for Toothpaste, before you actually had the money to have a shop. True? 
True. Right. So this is what I wanted everyone to understand. You can already lay your customers. And if you want, if you find any one of us partners that is about to lead you into the business, let us help you. We can easily make an order of six bottles or some shampoo, go together, get you some customers. You keep the profit. We get the money for our product back. And when you have a little bit more profit, now you can get the shop, right? Never stop yourself from not doing this business because you don't have money. That is not the excuse, right? If I don't have money, I'll, I'll find ways. If I want to do a lemonade stand, and I don't have money to go and buy lemon and buy sugar and, and buy a blender, I will still find a lemon tree and I will take a few lemons. I will go to my neighbors and knock and say, can I have a half glass sugar, please? And I will go and I don't have a blender. I'll do it by hand until I can have 10 lemonades and I will sell those 10 lemonades and I will take that profit and maybe buy my first blender. I want you all to understand money can never be the reason why you are not taking a step to change your financial outcome. Because if money is the reason, it's a catch-22, chicken and the egg. What comes first? Do I need money to make money? No, you need ambition, you need desire, and you need action. And if you have those three, you will always find someone with a little bit more money than you that will help you to start. And if you can't find them, I'm here because I believe everyone in the world has a true chance with the Opulence platform. And remember, Opulence is just a car, is just a vehicle that allows us an equal chance, all of us, to take control over our life. Physical health, mental health, financial health, and spiritual health. Thank you very much, Mahmoud Helmi, for sharing. We are going to do great things here in Egypt with you. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Yulia, do we have any other questions or should we open the last five, 10 minutes for amazing leaders? Uh, maybe to share like Rene Liao and uh, Amarjit or anyone that wants to share. Do we have any questions left? I will pass my questions and I will open mics for people because uh, if there's someone who wants to ask a question or share something, then this is the place to do it. This is the time to do it. No matter if you are a partner or a guest, any question is a good question. Uh, so Ronan is here to answer any question you might have or any share that you want to share. So please open your mics, feel free. Hello, hello, good morning everyone, it's Renee here. Good morning, Renee, how are you? Hello, hello, Yuli, again, uh, amazing, amazing call, Ronan. Um, you know, I, I still recall uh, the first time meeting you. Uh, oh, you got muted for a moment. You're muted. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, I'm still new, I guess, to this whole Zoom thing. I'm just kidding. No, but I still recall the first time, you know, uh, meeting you, Ronan. And uh, I actually I heard so much about you even before you actually got into the company. And that's because, of course, you were asking all the questions, all the right questions, you know, with your vast experience, of course, as you mentioned in the past, you know, you want to find, I guess, you know, the most perfect company. And it's it very interesting because, you know, it, it was my first sort of time uh, ever really seeing someone uh, spending that much time, <laughs> you know, before, before pulling the trigger and coming on board. And, you know, you're such a huge uh, source of inspiration for so many people. You know, you bring amazing knowledge and background to our company. And uh, what can I say? You know, you, you definitely live the life uh, going to Thailand. And I think you have the most uh, insane story in the company, which is you went to Thailand and then you got locked down there. And you spent the next, you know, many, many months, of course, uh, I think things happen for a reason. You met someone, of course, <laughs> along the way there. But, you know, Ronan, thank you so much for amazing training call. And it, it's, it's a blessing to have partners like you in our company that brings so much different experience. Uh, you know, you spent so many years in different companies, so many, you know, uh, so many up and downs. And I'm just so glad that you were able to find your home here. And of course, with, with your leadership, you've helped so many people around the world. As you mentioned, you know, you brought Israel to, you know, the top five markets, you know, uh, first place uh, several times. So again, thank you, Ronan, uh, for taking the time to share, you know, your your uh, your up and downs, your background, of course, your knowledge, more importantly. So thank you for an amazing call. Looking forward, of course, to uh, to more trainings from you. Thank you, Ronan. 
Well, I can tell you after 32 years in the industry, one of the things you all want to inspire to is to be able to have your mentor and leader, which make no mistake, LD4 Rene Liao is my mentor together with Reza Mizgarlu. Uh, to have them say things like this, it makes it all worthwhile. And I remember still, I remember when I was checking this company and I was very skeptical. Uh, Rene was the second person that spoke to me on Skype in those days for an hour after I spoke to Sherry Zhao uh, and before that Lior and eventually you put me in front of Reza, but it was only then that the four of you were strong enough to say, get on a plane and fly 27 hours from Melbourne to Toronto and come and meet the, this amazing visionary person that created this. And uh, I remember as I was landing in China, it's a long flight, guys, long flight. I was cursing. I landed in Toronto. It was minus 27 degrees, walls of snow, my lungs. I, I, and I can tell you that from the second that we got together and Leo picked me and then Rene and they took me to dinner. And the second that started to happen, it's almost like all the cold has gone away. And I was for four days engulfed with vision, engulfed with light, engulfed with people that are very different to the people I've met in the industry before because they had a much longer term vision. For them, it was all about family, much more than just a financial organization. And uh, since that day, I've adopted it. And uh, yeah, people like Rene Liao is really shareholder Rene Liao. Those are the people that made this company possible for all of us. Because I promise you that whatever compliment he gave me today, I know the truth. And the truth is every startup, every company in the first five years, is the hardest work ever to build. We are coming now 16 years after, that's a piece of cake. But Rene Liao, Resumis Garlu, and so many others that I'm not gonna mention now, are the people that they were the true pioneers. They were the ones that had almost nothing to sell. They didn't give up. They created a platform for us to be able to be so spoiled. And I would, I would maybe warn all of us of one thing our compensation plan is so good that sometimes it makes us lazy and yes. that is something that if we don't pay close attention to and start working if i was the owner i'd start asking myself maybe i should make my compensation plan harder in order for people to work harder so let's not wait for that to happen let's make sure that we take advantage of the greatest compensation in the world and do a little bit more each and every one of us. Get out of a hobby mode and truly give back to this company that have done so, so much uh, in order to give us a chance. Let's, let's take ourselves more seriously and we will be able to provide to ourselves and to many, many others. And I'm saying this not because I'm there. I'm saying this because I'm one of you practicing on becoming better every day, getting myself out of my comfort zone every day. And Rene and people that know me will tell you that I'm an expert in staying in my comfort zone with a compensation plan like that. It's very easy. So we're not allowed to do that. We, we need to take this advantage and, and build opulence to become what it truly needs to become. And that is the number one e-commerce platform on the planet. Thank you, I just, Rene. To, uh, just want to also add really quickly, you know, that folks, you know, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that Ronan, of course, has has gone through the the defeat of challenges you know i still recall uh you know our our, our many you know uh, buildings together you know and expand you know going to australia together and then you have different places and you know one thing about ronan is that he, he never gave up you know I, you know like we always had the good times but of course every business has your down times and i think that the, the one thing that makes leaders like ronan is that they keep on persisting forward you know even during the rough times that we've had in the past but of course as you can see it definitely pays off in the end, right? So again, hats off to you, Ronan, for just you know sticking through it and and just being the amazing leader that you are. So thank you, Ronan, and uh, uh, back to you. I'm gonna give this back to Yulia. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to keep the recording on or not. Uh... Of course, yes. Hi, hi, Yulia. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Nora. How are you? Good. I just wanted to say two things because. Uh, uh, Ron and touched on it and uh, the money, money, money issue. 
So for me, I don't personally understand. I don't know, I'm not bragging or anything. I don't personally understand when people say there's no money when you present an opportunity and they say about no money because I was in that place. I was in that place and I believe that the more the when we don't have money the more we need this opportunity in order to create that money and the second one i want to talk about is uh running running you do you didn't know this and i never told you about this but the first time i met you in the head office when i was you actually uh, I was doing the boot camp. I'm not sure if you remember that. We, we, there was a boot, boot camp in the office. And I was uh, one of the section, I was doing one of the section with, I believe it was uh, me and Sherry. And there was an o o audience that want you that just flew in from Australia and another one from, uh, they were the blue ocean, we call it. And that guy that's become a diplomat in nine minutes. Two. So I was, I was doing that uh, boot camp with all your, all of you guys. They have like, and then I I was fine. I came home. I you guys. Uh, I think uh, Ramin took you out for dinner, or the leadership took you out for dinner. I went home and I read a post that uh, uh it was a, it says. An exper um, experience in network marketing, 80 total experience, over 100 uh, exper ex uh, in network marketing with all of you put together, your experience together. I was like, what? I just stand, uh, stand in front of those people and they are, they know more than me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, and that actually helped me build, build my confidence to, to send that and really, if I know that you guys were all that, I probably will not stand there and probably shaking my boots, but I went there with my lively self and being uh, enjoying the training, doing the training. And without, I, have a, I didn't have a clue you girls were like 30 years in the business. You have so much experience and I'm like a, a baby. So for you who are, uh, for the people on the call that have been uh, like, maybe you're scared, don't be because uh you the the thing is you guys were like i can literally see you still visualize you watching what we were sherry and i were doing on that boot camp and i was so amazed to know and shocked that you guys were experienced and that really lifted my uh self-confidence so Thank you so much for being so humble that you're just like, oh, I know. Some people will already say, oh, I know that. Oh, I know this. I know that already. What are you talking about? No, but you guys are asking questions from us and we were answering the questions. And that was a start of my journey as a presenter and doing trainings. And that really helps me a lot. Thank you so much. I thought Thank I just you. let you know that. Thank you, Nora. Uh, I remember that boot camp, and uh, I think from that boot camp, I have learned the beginning of everything I needed to know in this company because I was brand new. And it's irrelevant how much experience we have in an industry. When you come to a brand new company, you you have to be a student. You otherwise you don't learn anything. And Nora, you always need to know you have been a very strong personality in my life. Every time I wanted to quit. Uh, I don't know why, there is something about you that always inspired me because I've seen you going through challenging times uh, and you've never quit. You've always been there. And I said, what? This is amazing Filipina. If she doesn't quit, I'm not going to quit. That's not going to happen. So uh, I'm sure you have helped many, many other people and you are a symbol in our company. Truly you are. Uh, and this is one thing that's amazing in our company. You can be a, a very high ranked pin and you can be a person that has been with us for less than a year but in the way that you will be taken as a family in our company it is the same we are not here measured by ranks because Ramina's taught us it's not about uh, your ranks or your ego or it's actually about the people 
and never ever forget the people that are joining with you because they are the one that makes you. And I've seen many celebs mentality in network marketing, people that get on stages and they have, uh, you know, 10,000 people and they forget that they are nothing without those 10,000 people, right? And sometimes I think opulence is such a beautiful place that each and every person here gets his accolades, gets his respect according to what they are and not necessarily only according to what they've earned or what rank they are. And uh, this is a great opportunity to raise another inspiring individual uh, that has also changed my business very seriously in so many attributes. But I think the one that gave me the most belief that in our business, everyone can succeed. Everyone, never mind where you come from. And the proof is uh, in the pudding, as I say, an LD4, Ifra Hassan. Uh, has shown me how in two and a half years you can come uh, with a very, very shy personality, uh, uninvolved, not really knowing what's going on, and then in two and a half years literally changing the lives of thousands of people, not hundreds, thousands of people. So allow me to maybe ask for a few words from an individual that is no longer shy and is leading so many of us uh, Ifra, would you please share a few words? I would be honored to. Thank you so much, my brother Ronan, my great mentor, our amazing leader. Wow, wow, wow. What an inspiring, inspiring day, evening here, listening to it. Yulia, you're just phenomenal. You need to have your own show, literally. I love it. I love how calm, collected you are and everything. All right, so my brother Ronan, I, I just wanted to come on here to thank you so much for being who you are, you know? Our sister uh, uh, Nora is absolutely right. Like the, the, who you are as a person. When I first met you, I remember, oh, uh, it was I believe October, 2018, my first year in Toronto, my first conference ever. And we had a nice chat. But before that, I actually spoke with you way before I was on your team and everything. And you're one of the first people that told me the qualification MGR, as you said, if uh, you want to see something magic happen, qualify for MGRs every month. And I, I, I wrote it down. I'm like, Brother Ronan said this, so I'm going to do it. And for sure, it did help me a lot. So I want to thank you for who you are every single day, how you're helping people around the world. The story, Brother Mahmoud Ilmi in, in Egypt, it really touched me how, you know, you showed him, you know what, you don't have to have money to start right now, but you can still do the business. So that is an eye opening to all of us. In my country, it's the same. Many people around the world is the same, right? That we can actually help people get started. So you, you're a pioneer, Rona. What can I say? Thank you for who you are. And I just wanted to, you know, give it back to you here uh, before I jump on to, we have a, our team call as well. So thank you for an amazing interview, uh, Yulia, again. Thank you so much, Ifra. Yulia, back to you. We all have a lot of other calls to do. We kept everybody for about an hour and a half now. Uh, so I will give it back to you. And uh, I've had so much fun today. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for everything that you are, for everything that you are doing every day. And even if it feels sometimes like you're walking in quicksand and you're not moving forward, trust me, it only feels that way. There is no action without moving forward. There's no such thing. So do not discourage yourself and go and change your lives. Back to you, Yulia, and thank you. Thank you very much, Ifra, for sharing. Ronan, I would love to speak, guys. <laughs> Hi, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Hi. Of course, Miriam, please. Yeah, you know what? Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Ronan. And, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, I've been listening, but I could not um, do anything else because it's uh, it's my my. I'm gonna be the first grandma. Today is a baby shower for my daughter, but I said I do not want to miss. And thank you for adapting me, for you to be you know my my sponsor, my upliner, and uh, been there for thick and thin. You and Julia, you are God sent it to me. You know, when uh, so my upline I quit, you know, sometimes you are hanging in the thread, right? But when you have the support, that's the beauty about uh, our company. You'll never be alone. We have Renee, we're Raz, you, 
you know, Ron, Nani, uh, Nora, uh, Ifra, like Estella. So everybody is like there. So I just want to appreciate so much for being there. You know, I remember too, 2018, that was my first time meeting you too. And we click. I didn't know that you're going to adapt to me too. So I'm honored and uh, we'll continue working together and we can't wait. I wish you, when I was in Africa, you were there and we could go up to Zanzibar and everything. But all the team, I've already told them that you are coming and they are waiting for you and Raza, you know, and uh, please don't leave Julia back. Julia need to be there to all of you too, you know. So we just want to say thank you and uh, keep up, keep continue to help us, all of us. Teamwork, make the dream work to the billion you know this is our company is our home it's the opulence nation you know it doesn't have no color no religion no nothing it's just helping people people helping each other and lift each other up thank you it is i that have to thank you miriam when i've met you i was not aware of how much in life you are doing and beyond all the stuff you do in opulence you are a part of so many different humanitarian movement you do so much for africa uh, I mean, you are, I, I, you're the person that convinced me that there is actually 40 hours in a day and not 24 hours in a day. Uh, I don't know how you do it, uh, but it's amazing yeah. to see someone give so much out of themselves with no connection to uh, economy. Uh, that's incredible. And uh, don't worry, very soon we will be in Africa together. I have no doubt. So thank you, Miriam, for everything that you're doing for so many people. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for an amazing call, Ronan. Uh, thank you for all that you shared with us. This was really inspiring. And thank you to every person who unmuted themselves, asked a question, shared something. It adds a lot to every call. And with that, I think uh, we can end the call and release everyone to enjoy their Sunday. And to our Canadian partners and guests, enjoy the holiday. And thank you for joining us today. If you are a partner, we're going to see you on our next calls this week. If you are a guest, please ask the person who invited you to this call uh, to get more info. You can learn about the product. You can learn about the company. You can learn how you can start creating income from wherever you are in the world using your phone or laptop and create another income from home. Uh, so please ask the person who invited you today. And you can join us every Sunday, same day, same time on another leadership cocktail, hearing more success and life stories of great people. And thank you once again, Ronan. Thank you, everyone. To the billion. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to my mom for joining us, for sure. Thank you for the support, mom. I'll join Yulia and put a heart and show you how much I love you all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have a lot, a lot of work in front of us and we are a truly blessed company and the action we take changing people's life is blessed. Don't forget it. If you're going to live, might as well live in the light. Thank you all. And bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Oh, Excellent. Bye, 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 and Yulia. You are Thank awesome, you. sir. You are awesome. Thank you. Bye -bye. Love you Bye -bye. 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 B